perspective around the premises. With our conclaves, events, and panel discussions, we bring practical knowledge to our community about corporate lives through taboo topics and events like human library. Team Newswire provides the opportunity to the students of IBS Hyderabad to refashion their erudite ideologies towards the corporate world by encouraging versatility in its domains to achieve a broader perspective of the corporate culture. Dot Club is the official techno managerial club of IBS Hyderabad, believes in nurturing the analytical skill sets and tech savvy attitude for resolving emerging managerial challenges along with a horizontal focus on academic learning and employability. Today, for the conclave, we have with us Dr. Angshuman Ghosh and Mr. Kameshwar Iranki, sir, to give us an insight into the topic cloud security. So let us introduce our first guest. Dr. Angshuman Ghosh is currently the head of data science at Sony Research India. Earlier, he has held leadership roles at Disney, Target, Grab, Spice, and Wipro. Data science, engineering, and business leader with 12 plus years of rich experience in leading Fortune 100 and unicorn startup companies. Dr. Ghosh has obtained his BE degree in computer science from Indian Institute of Engineering Science and Technology, Shippur. And then he obtained his PhD and MBA degree in digital analytics from XLRI, Jamshedpur. He also volunteered as a guest speaker in reputed mm -hmm. educational institutions like IIM Calcutta, IIM Indore, IIT Madras, IIT Kharagpur, University of Chicago as a keynote speaker, and ISRO ETC. In a career span of 18 plus years, Dr. Ghosh has served as visiting professor, senior manager, lead data scientist, strategy and analytics manager, and senior software engineer in various companies. We welcome you, sir. Mr. Kameshwar Aranki, sir, is the founder and CEO of Vajrasoft Incorporated of award-winning cloud applications and driving the growth of product and customer portfolio. He has over 24 years of software product development and business development experience. He is responsible for spearheading intellectual property software development, process improvement, technology adoption, and delivering customer value. He is recognized as a leader in cloud computing and as a global intellectual property expert. Mr. Arangi Saw has led, architected, managed, designed, and developed club, cloud web enterprise, large data warehousing applications, and solutions for enterprise customers. He is experienced in providing solutions to biotech, pharmaceutical, retail, banking and finance, automotive, manufacturing, glass and chemicals, and aerospace industries. His area of expertise includes IP maturity model, cloud computing, big data expert, cloud expertise product management, service-oriented architecture, and enterprise integrations, etc. Sir has obtained his MS degree in e-business systems and technologies from Golden State University, California. We take immense pleasure in welcoming our esteemed guests. Now, we would like to hand over the virtual podium to today's moderator, Satyajit Nanda. The stage is all yours now. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you so much, Angshuman, sir, and Kameshwar, sir. It's really great having you, both of you, to this uh, platform. Uh, so starting with that, I hope you both are doing absolutely fine. And let's start with the discussion. The first question our student is having for you is, so how is cloud different from the traditional data centers? And we can start with Angshuman, sir. Then we can move to Kameshwar, sir. Okay, so uh, are we supposed to share some presentation or it should be like sure, sir. Your wish. Because yeah you can go for it uh, i mean if you have some slides please go for it yeah, yeah maybe they had a freestyle format i initially yeah. thought it will be a presentation so i created something so maybe i'll share some of that and then uh, probably we can have discussion as well yeah if yeah, yeah. yes yes makes sense mm -hmm. We'll address this question, Satyajit, okay? Yeah, no yeah, issues. Sure. Yep. We'll address it. Sure, sir. 
So I'll share my screen. Uh, please, someone confirm when you are able to see it. Huh? So are you able to see the screen? Yep. Oh, we can. So introduction is already done. I'll not get into that. So let's focus. So I'll cover certain topics, but I'll go through quickly. And definitely we'll have more time for discussion and Q&A. Uh, and some of it, probably you know a bit of it, but I thought it's better to give the basic background before we get into more discussion. So what is cloud security? I think some of it has been discussed, but then I'll also discuss about why it is so important and with some of the actual incidents and what is the status even in India. Then I think the question that you asked, I think part of it, it will get covered in types of cloud. So we have on-premise or, or different type of cloud model, how different are they? And at the end, I will try to uh, put out a simple three-step model. What are the main three steps you can take for your cloud security? Of course, there is a lot more to you, it, and probably you know the other speaker will also mention in more detail. He has, of course, much more expertise than me in this particular area, so he will probably share more detail. But I will put forward a simple framework nonetheless. So what is cloud security? I think some of it has been mentioned, uh, but the key part that I want to highlight it, cloud security is extremely important, especially when most of the companies are moving to cloud. So I think in last uh, few organizations, I have worked for say Disney, Target, Grab, or now even for Sony, we are extensively using cloud computing for most of our application, be it for data science, be it for product, be it for app development. And hence cloud computing or cloud computing security becomes very, very important. So what are cloud computing security? Uh, these are broadly set of policies, technology, application, etc., which are used to protect your intellectual property, data, application, services, all that you are using in the cloud computing ecosystem. So it's extremely, extremely important. Let's see why. So these are probably two of the top you know, tech companies in the world. So one is LinkedIn, which is one owned by Microsoft now. Another is Apple. And so if these things can happen to them, it can happen to anybody else. So for LinkedIn, in 2012, more than 6 million user account and password, email, etc. were hacked, right? So that was one of the biggest uh, security hacks till that time. And much later, uh, even for Apple, which is known for its security, privacy, and all of that, iCloud, which is the cloud storage solution from Apple, from that 650,000 photos and videos were leaked, stolen, and made public and this included a lot of nude photos from celebrities so even if you know companies like apple and microsoft who are at the forefront of technology industry such incident has happened to them and it can happen to anybody let's see some more details so if we see globally uh, these are some of the examples where we had huge data breaches or cloud security breaches on the left side you can see marriott which is the number one hotel brand in the world Yahoo, MySpace, Equifax, eBay, Target, one of the companies I have worked for earlier also had a big security breach in 2013. LinkedIn, of course, we mentioned, and many of you are using Cura as well, where also 100 million user accounts were hacked in 2018. Back home in India, if you can see, this is the latest data from 2021. These are some of the largest data breaches from cloud in India. So Domino's, there were 18 crore order data were leaked. Mobiquik, a payments platform, 10 crore user data were leaked. Even for Facebook, Air India, and App Stocks, which is a you know stock trading platform, lakhs of user data were leaked. Right, so it's very very important. So from the user perspective, you can understand if you are in a B two C business, it is extremely important. But not only that, I think for most companies, it is extremely important. Gartner conducted a study uh, for many companies that okay, cloud computing is very important and everybody wants to move towards cloud, but why is it not happening? So they ask, what are the reasons? Why are you not moving to cloud? And if you see, so uh, the respondents, which are companies could give option like number one, number two, number three reason. And you see for the number one reason, 36% of the respondents said security or privacy concern. So everybody understands the value of cloud, but because of the security and privacy concern, many of them are hesitating or not moving towards cloud. So definitely you understand that cloud security is extremely, extremely important, both from the consumer point of view, as well as from the point of view of companies or organizations. 
moving to the type of cloud i think some of it uh, will probably answer the question that was asked that what is the difference between on premise or cloud and why you should move to cloud so we can divide the cloud computer platforms based on two different factor one is based on deployment right where is it deployed is it on premise is it in private public or hybrid cloud and other is based on the service model so you may, may have heard of the terms like saas pass and ias right so we'll discuss briefly what are those so in terms of types of cloud so of course i think uh, on premise is when you have your servers and computers inside your organization in a protected environment which cannot be accessed by anyone else right but now that we are putting everything in the cloud uh, environment there are different kind of cloud deployment that you can have so definitely you can have a public cloud in case of public cloud one of the best example will be an app and website that everybody is using so every data or application is probably available to the public so whoever is accessing the website is able to see the data on the website however if you want to keep things private so there are private files and data which you don't want people to access so here at sony there are a lot of data and a lot of content or document we work with which we don't want anybody to see so we put that in a private cloud and you can protect it using a vpn or a virtual private network so private cloud is very good when you want more security but of course then outside your organization from websites people won't be able to access that data so what is how if you want to have the best of both then what can you have so suppose you want to keep some data or files private but at the same time you want to give some access to the users via an website or app so then you can use something called a hybrid cloud where some data and confidential confidential information can be stored in the private cloud and the only information that you want to show to the user in website can be in the private uh, public cloud so it is a combination of private and public and there are now some examples of community um, cloud as well where there can be different organizations which are co-hosting and sharing the uh, space so that probably it is better for their cost so they are sharing the cost but of course this can have some security implication so if we think in terms of security of course private cloud will be the best but it is not so convenient if you want to give lot of access to the users so you have to balance right looking at the different cloud service model again there is a difference so traditional what you mentioned in that case from networking to storage to server to database to application everything was managed by the company or the user so company had access and had to manage everything from infrastructure to final database and application that is something that is shown on the live uh, left side with the blue boxes right but as we move towards the infra as service and we'll discuss what are those examples so when we move at infra as service for example we can think of microsoft azure amazon web services or google uh, cloud so in that case they are providing you some of the part of these services as an infrastructure and rest of the things you can design on your own so they provide you the storage networking server etc and you can put your own security protocol database and application on top of that right so that is infrastructure as a service example again will be azure aws or google cloud then the next model is platform as a service where even the server and security are taken care of by the vendor or service provider so example can be aws elastic beanstalk or windows azure heroku etc and only thing that as user you need to maintain a database where you store your data and the application that is something you expose to the user and when you finally think about software as a service then even the database and application are taken care of so the vendor or service provider provides you everything from the storage to server to security to database to application example will be salesforce for you know marketing uh, crm purposes also say google drive uh, which many of us are using in fact the file that i'm sharing with you currently uh, the document or the presentation it is on google drive so that will be example of saas or software as a service now going quickly to three step model to ensure security in cloud and of course this is very basic just as a starting point probably we'll discuss more during the discussion but i think there are three main things you need to do first thing is the monitoring you need to monitor the data and the access that is happening so when you have say hybrid cloud and you have some private access given to 
only set of people based on certain user id password and there is a public access given to users who access your website and you want to monitor if there is a sudden spike in the number of user accessing the website if there is a compromise on user id password or any such things or somebody trying to steal some information that they should not have access to for all those purposes it is extremely important to monitor data so definitely in on on premise and in many other cases you can create your own dashboards or your own protocol your your own alerts to monitor the access patterns but in some of the cloud computing uh, services they provide you certain tool to do that so we'll see one example in case of aws once you have monitored the data you need to find out if there is a breach or there is a problem so definitely you can keep people who can monitor the data pattern and find out some problem and flag it so in case of different banks and you know some trading organization they have compliance and risk people who monitor a lot of data and flag if there is a problem but not only that you can also create a machine learning model which can find which can probably do something like an anomaly detection so when there is something very abnormal happens in terms of traffic access you know access to password etc it can flag it and send a alert so that gives you the visibility and some cl cloud service pl platforms will see in case of aws they have a tool using which also you can get such alert or visibility and finally most importantly managing the access so even before you give somebody data access you need to make sure that people have right data access and minimum level of access can be given to people for their use case also whenever you monitor and find any security flaw or issue then also you can control the access and we will see in case of aws how to do that so monitoring data in case of uh, cloud computing platform aws you have a service flaw called aws cloudwatch so in aws you have different services so you have for processing ec2 you have for storage s3 etc to monitor different matrices for ec2 s3 etc you can use cloudwatch and you can also set uh, which metrics you want to monitor is it cost is it usage is it storage size etc and you can also set an alarm if the storage goes beyond a limit or traffic goes beyond a limit you get those alarms you can get them via email also you can also have graphs and statistics using which you can monitor all of this and you can react if there is a problem that you uh, observe once you have monitored and uh, you know you know that you have set your alerts second thing that you can do is visibility that you can now know uh, what happened right so suppose there is a breach and suppose i of, uh, found out that during probably 3 to 4 o'clock today there was some problem there was suddenly high traffic on my website and website crashed so i need to know more detail who logged in who, from which location users came is there any you know abnormal login etc so there is a service in aws called aws cloud rail using which all the log is stored so you know at what time which user accessed which particular service so once you monitor some issue using cloudwatch you can come to cloud rail and find out who logged in at that time was there any suspicious activity from which ip or which user that thing happened and based on that you can go to the next step where you can do access control and for access control you can do it when some incident happened but not only then you can do the access control before also so you can make sure who has which access so you can set very granular level access so you can say from public ip people who are accessing will have only access to certain output api or output data table rest of the confidential data will not be accessible and only your internal people using some Okta account or using some special user ID password can only access your AWS console. So all that permission and security you can set at the user level, at the bucket level in S3 for every data point or even at the application or table level. So IAM is one service which is really great to control the access at a very, very granular level. So with that, I'll end my part of the presentation and I hand it over to the organizers. If we have questions, we can take some of them or else we can go to the other speaker and we can come back for the questions. Yeah, over to the organizers. Thank you so much, sir, for those wonderful insights. And I would like to request Kamisha to continue.
please sir all right uh, so i will also do the short presentation and uh, give a perspective in a slightly different way we'll test your abilities in the cloud by looking at the cyber security at one level up and how to avoid the cyber attacks which is so common these days okay so that said uh, let me try to share the screen one second and to answer to your question whether on prem or cloud which is better data center or cloud so that was a novice question why because all the cloud also will reside in a data center and data center can be your own center or as just dr gosh has mentioned it could be with microsoft on the azure platform or google that you are hosting on the gcp as we call it google cloud platform or third most popular you have aws as well so and i choreograph between all these clouds so now we we have a enterprise on one side so oops yeah sorry something got hacked <laughs> so uh, yeah let me share my screen uh, now i think somebody else is presenting can you give the rights to me so that i can do a quick uh, few slides yes, sir, on the good. cyber attack yep. uh, yeah it is done sir thank you Please, please do it, sir. Yeah, can I have access now? Uh, Let's so just I can present now. Okay. Yeah, my entire screen. All right. So, can you allow others to see the screen? I would say allow. Uh, just a second. So, entire screen. Okay. All right. Can you guys uh, see that now? Yes, sir. Can you? Okay. So let me just put it into the presentation mode. As you can see, today cyber security is one of the key aspect, and the cloud security, what you do, is flavored in two aspects. One in the on-prem, that is within your enterprise and your set of offices and your buildings. The second aspect would be on the cloud side of it, where you are using any of this platform or all of these platforms. And having worked for Fortune 5 to Fortune 500 companies all my life, I'm pretty much aware of the kind of issues that go around in the entire cyberspace. And uh, once you are out of your enterprise, as uh, Dr. Kosh has put it very well, the different types of clouds, enterprise, you have it. But key challenge for the enterprises would be how to manage your own enterprise, your own network, and go out and then work on, for example, first AWS, GCP, cloud, or Azure cloud of Microsoft, right? And simultaneously work through these clouds and make it seamless for the people. So this is a very key challenge, right? How to operate not only in your enterprise and multi-locational. Sony is a global company with 70 plus countries footprint, right? So how do you manage it and make it as just one enterprise is a everyday challenge with thousands of employees coming and going and your partner ecosystem and your customer base. You have to be on the tours. So cloud security, you have many of the vendors uh, AWS will have cloud hosting as you have seen the example. And on the prem, you have Okta as it was referred. Second, you have Microsoft uh, ADS Active Directory Service. And likewise, IBM has its own Tivoli Access Manager. Oracle has its own Identity Access Management, IAM as it's called, IAM. And likewise, the other guys SiteMinder is another example. So these are all good in the enterprise realm, but when you go to the cloud, there is no single point. And as a matter of fact, since I'm giving a simple use case, I work for such huge big company where we have to manage 
all the clouds that I have listed earlier from Amazon to GCP to AWS and other private clouds and integrate with the enterprise too. And this is a constant challenge, right? And this opens the door for the cyber attacks and ransom attack. So simple, I'm taking a storyline. If you do the job well, yes, it's a thankless job. You're doing well, you are paid for that. And if you don't do even once, this is the music that you're going to face. That's where I'm bringing these few slides to report on the cyber attacks. And in India, every alternate day, at least some of the sites are hacked. And uh, off late, you have seen even the bad incidents also happening, primarily attributed towards the cyber attack. I'll peel the onion layer. What if cybersecurity is not okay, right? So as you can see, every 11 seconds in this year, you have some form of ransomware attack happening. Ransomware is basically the, your compromised cloud security. They got you. Now they got your servers, users, whatever access, and then they demand to release it. And it's the dark web. The payments are usually taken across the dark web in terms of bitcoins. I'll give you the examples. As you can see, what are some of the recent ransomware attacks? The ramifications of not doing a good job on cloud security, period. So because of so many operational issues, the gaps and compromises would come. Here are the examples. So, so in the US, for example, the first one was Colonial Pipeline. All you guys are busy with the mobile phones and the Facebook, Instagram culture. So you would have seen a few months back this colonial pipeline where the entire stuff that was supplying the gas to the East Coast was interrupted. The security was compromised. They gained access to the servers and demanded multiple million, almost close to five million was paid to settle that and that too in Bitcoin. So in the dark web. So they become untraceable. So dark web is basically someone has come from the black hole, hit you and gone. And it's very difficult to trace it back. Why? Because some are the uh, state actors, as you call it. The governments also support this for military and non-military purposes, both. And as you can see, the compromise of cyber security or cloud security has resulted in all these problems. If you look at the authority of Massachusetts, they had this cyber hack. Likewise, JPS is the largest meat pack. Once the servers were compromised, entire supply chain was disrupted, and hence meat did not reach to the American homes. The prices went up, right? All the social issues. And likewise, the impact from that hack what is happening, right? To give you perspective, that's why I took a few examples. It makes very easy to understand. As you can see, the one gas supply we have just seen. Second, how much you had to pay to get your access back and then business as usual, right? And of course, I have to put more security guardrails. And uh, the food shortages would be created once you choke the gas. There is no supply. So it went to even $5 a gas, which is unheard of in the US, right? So now even in India also, you would have seen these spikes. So some of them are attributed for this sort of issues as well. And since your MBA grads are here, the financial losses. And uh, just to let you know, if just following this was so tough, imagine almost 15, 17 years back, I had to work and create what you see as internet banking today. So what standards are going to be there for the data centers, for the security? Everything had to be envisioned and at a transaction level, encryption to decryption, communication between the, basically the end user or the bank's consumer to the bank and their data center, everything had to be encrypted, decrypted, just with military precision, right? And imagine I uh, had to move in several banks from one point A to point B, $144 trillion. I said, enough, let's stop counting now. Enough, 
and not a single transaction error or a single security hack or the security data breach as you call it right so you have to be on top of it i just gave you the visual testimony on last 15 17 years worldwide with all the major banks just one bank moves more than 50 billion dollars on a day right with 252 working days you can imagine the transactions and without a hack for the last 17 years so you can have that impeccable track record provided you stay continuously on top this is basically one upmanship either at the operating system level or application level web application server level or even information security which is across firewalls compromised to the databases so attack can happen any of these layers there are seven layers typically for enterprise and you have to be watchful there now let me quickly finish off and get to the q and a now you had 92 ransom attacks for example that impacted into the healthcare since uh, i think uh, while interacting with the uh, patient such as it, i mentioned that uh, will be addressing the healthcare industry as well which is huge and give why i had to pick up this first use case why finance i just covered it banking and finance now in healthcare also you'll have a lot of billions of transactions every day so given that it's vulnerable and you don't have such skilled workers also that's the second one so it's a easy scapegoat in a way now all these attacks really resulted well over 20 billion in lost revenues and more than 600 hospitals clinics data was compromised this is more a statement of because of the talent and the skill crunch that exists that's why when you guys graduate it's uh, definitely needed that the cutting edge skills are there and the problem awareness so now cloud security or your cyber security at a higher level once it's compromised ransomware attacks on the gate here is a chemical distribution company and with 150 plus gp data stolen they had to pay on the dark web about uh, close to eight million dollars and then get it and that to in bitcoins right so now as you can see what uh, nothing is paid just not now you look at technology company as a dell you carry these laptops and that company itself had to suffer earlier they used the same methodology of tracking the cyber so one takeaway here is you have to learn from other men's mistake london foreign exchange of travel x was compromised using the same pattern of attack they attacked another network and this happens in an automated way that's why you have to learn from other men's mistake and uh, basically ensure that in your world all is well right that's the least way we could do to mitigate disaster for us in this case they didn't do it so they suffered it and i just gave you for fun the hacker group name so the dark side is one example and travel these are top five hacker groups in the world and uh, yeah they are spread all over and need not tell two friendly countries <laughs> right china and uh, russia for sure and uh, that's where majority of the attacks come from and microsoft ads and exchange server which is the mail server had some compromised version and they leverage that to symphon up the documents and ask for the payments <clears throat> as you guys see from your mba standpoint also the banking financial institutions are vulnerable but i gave you the impeccable track record how you can maintain so for example when we do application development and de deployment so uh, pen testing, penetrating testing would be one of the aspects. So you call SQL injection attack. So you have to be watchful. So these are the standard tests that should be done behind the scene when you deploy any of the application to your cloud servers or into your data center, right? Best practices wise. So this gives you now there is a diet need in the industry also. HIPAA is the regulatory compliance for the healthcare. So this sets the guardrail, email encrypted, social encrypted. So they put 
some of the key data points and government has said mandatory go encrypt this stuff and one of the platforms that we developed and the entire platform is totally into and encrypted that gives a very high level of security for the individuals and as i said no complacency you have to have the one up man share and continuously strive to make it better and better every day that has to be part of the work culture and when you use the iot devices and medical devices even they have unique ids and you have to make sure that they are working well that includes even a heart device embedded into someone's heart right to keep that artificial heart going the valves for example right so that's in brief and uh, now we can get into the q and a more formal free flow right all right back to you guys i think i can stop sharing now and back to you okay yep so hope that gives you the problems and the width of problems and what's happening out on the global scale if you don't do right job right the music is evident how soon is the question right back to you thank you so much sir thank you so much for your wonderful insights on the same topic so uh, now there are also many companies those who are migrating to cloud so right. uh, the, the question here is for both the guests are there what strategy can we put in place to keep our data and application secure during and after migrating to the cloud again we'll right. be starting with anshuman sir then we'll be going to kamishwar sir good so i think uh, if i got your question correctly you're saying a lot of companies are moving to cloud and like when they are moving or after they have moved what are the key things they should do and i think that's a very good question because when you are moving to cloud of course there are certain things which are similar but a lot of things are also different right and sometimes it can be very confusing and complicated as well because if you take the example of aws so aws has few thousand services and even on the security privacy networking front they have probably few hundred services at least right so only few of that probably we mentioned say you know cloud trail cloud doorch etc but there are a lot of services for identity access control iam itself is so complex that to understand that it takes a lot of time you have to try out and there are so many hundreds of like probably thousands of different possible policies so i think most important is get some right expert or talent like kamesh sir is here he mentioned that you know he has probably decades of experience doing such thing so he already probably knows okay these are the possible flaws these are the possible things these are the good platforms services i should follow right so for example when i joined sony sony uses you know octa or some of the other microsoft uh, services to monitor the devices give you the access etc right so it's better to go to some expert who knows the thing to get the initial you know idea then once you move to the cloud uh, platform it's very important to conduct some training for all the members right because sometimes your weakest link can be the person who did not know much who just had little bit access but exposed the system right so you have to conduct some training so that everybody knows the things and of course i think most important is continuous monitoring right so as sir said that you cannot take it for granted right so technologies are getting advanced you know security systems are getting advanced but hackers are also getting smarter right so they also have probably similar cloud computing or other powerful computer to do the hacking so i think uh, hackers are also getting much smarter so we have to be continuously cautious we have to monitor any incident and we cannot take things for granted whenever there is a small issue happening you know it has to be taken care of and has to be included in the policy framework to take care of it so what to kamesh sir i think he is a better expert to answer such questions sir please add to my comments over to you yeah yeah thank you dr gosh uh, continuing to what he said he covered it uh, very well in terms of 360 degrees now i'll peel the onion layer little bit so you asked what does it take to go to the cloud i'll ask who you are right are you a bank are you a normal enterprise are you a end consumer or are you a healthcare guy right and i have different answers to you so it depends right <laughs> i'm bringing that thing back for fun so i'm teasing myself here so it depends so what depends then you understand samajh gaya type so 
that said it's too fun that's where the cracks build why because there is some user id password access that you have it and you get it and if somebody shares that's a biggest disaster so if somebody usually they share the common password whatever even for the team one day one time good enough then half the enterprise will know that so never ever give the passwords period second don't log in to somebody and then okay keep working and then move away never ever do that we put even data centers of facebook not to name them there are at least five layers of thumb impression right you validate with the physical security with the thumb impressions scan it imagine at least five doors before you get to the servers so this is how the data centers are secured and of course with cameras too so there is lot of security visual and with the body scan or the finger scan type of technologies but still the incidents i told you they are happening imagine every 11 seconds as we are talking already you would have seen 2000 ransomware hacks happening in the world so you have to be on the toes literally so for that how do you apply the guardrails very simple pick up a enterprise security product and live with that so there are two aspects here when you move to the cloud you are giving the impression yeah i am going from my enterprise to the cloud right and uh, that is one use case the second is you start your life only in the cloud then there is no enterprise everything is there in the cloud right so how do you go about and aws as example gave well there are over 10000 products there productized services so given that magnitude that itself is a mini universe and uh, however for government and federal where us military was using it they said uh, we don't prefer this normal data centers or your vms virtual machines we need our own version so they created separate data centers with the military specifications and that grid is totally offline to what the grid of servers that normally guys like you and me would access you see so the differentiation comes on the use case based on who you are and to what you want to do you understood the narrative right it may sound simple and then if you don't understand you will learn it the hard way there is no doubt about that and it is very expensive so in india i feel it very bad because to report every second day you have consistent cyber security hack is not a good news right so nobody would want it but imagine millions and billions of data points are being taken out so one key takeaway is you guys should be the watch dogs right meaning yeah i'll take care of my part and that's how everybody contributes to the nation right and uh, set the guardrails set the mutual expectations help each other in educating this is very important even as he mentioned employees have to be trained now in the healthcare domain where i operate now we have hipa compliance so any employee or consultant has to go through that minimum one hour half day of the training course to understand what is hipa and what are those 18 elements that have to be encrypted period without that second day work starts first day they will learn these things you see so the work ethics culture has been set learn these things because this is not terminology but every day you have to use this so that minimal benchmark we have put through same way for the partners also sales marketing business development we come together and build the products apis and give access to lot of data again there also we train them it's not that hey you have to be trained no we ensure after their verbal certificate yes let us go through the drill and educate them if you invest that half a day one hour or one day then the returns are your risks are mitigated right 
it is direct investment i train them they know it so then compromise is very difficult right once you educate them otherwise i don't know sir is very common thing that you will get back anywhere in the world just not india so to make them know is important and that's the management job when you get into top management's rest of the life i suggest invest only when you invest and you are graduating with super record rest of the life would be great fun right same way even in enterprise we have to invest on people give them the necessary training skills awareness only then we could do and imagine my plight because uh, you guys are doing online learning this is part of it and i had to invent this more than 22 years back around 98 i brought e learning and transformed how education is delivered in classroom and imagine there is hardly internet usage audio on internet or video on internet and you talk cyber security i would like what the heck is going on right people would question me so but we had to visualize this problems and take it forward you see so for every new service you are doing you have to learn from end user experience how do they come what do they do how do i make it easy right so this sound youtube what you are taken for granted was non existential there so we had to put audio on demand servers video on demand servers and then cater to what you see as youtube streaming today taken at a click of a button browsers didn't support you had multi purpose mail extensions so these are all the why i'm listing is these are all the compromising agents also in your south cloud security game where you are least prepared they will do the plan of attack from there so cover your tracks that's a key takeaway cover your tracks very well okay back to you guys thank you thank you so much sir and thank yeah. you so much ango sir and uh, the next question is uh, so so what are the business benefits that can be derived from cloud architecture and again we'll start with ango oh and then amisha sir he can go first okay. Okay. yeah yeah please sir and, and the, as you call it there are hazard benefits okay <laughs> so it just goes on the first benefit is you don't want to be hacked right security compromise somebody owning your assets and demanding money that's the worst thing that can happen right that's why i educated so when every 11 seconds on an average if a incident is happening and somebody is hacking do you need to be on the guard you protect your wallet while going right even in a bus or in any vehicle now imagine the corporate data also is like a bigger wallet and every employee has to protect it that's one and okay enterprise will set its own guard rails but every consumer also should do what they should do right so the best practices basically so evolve the best practices and daily guidances what to do one simple thing is because we come from hardware and i mean the healthcare industry right now the guardrail that we set up is you cannot leave your desktop alone period so more than 5 minutes the policy it will auto basically automatically throw you out of uh, what do you say do another control alt del and again gain the access to the screen right so maximum is 5 minutes window we had set up so that nobody else is coming and using it you may think i will just go fetch coffee and come back meanwhile that's good enough time for the smart fellow to make his move so never ever do that and uh, always make sure you lock your screen before you step out you step out into a meeting lock it out so these are minimal best practices that you have to do to ensure the safety the why if you ask gun you know, that's a negative culture so it's not that blindly follow it's this simple thing right just protect it you will protect even while walking also you'll make sure you will watch the stairs or elevator and take it then why not for the your own system that is giving you bread butter jam right so this once the work culture 
second aspect, right? I gave you best practices and the work culture. Once you imbibe this, it becomes easy. It doesn't become a habit. It becomes part of you getting water or coffee. So easy, so seamless. Make sense? So, and then there are advanced tools and technologies also that you can take through. Now, as you mentioned, uh, AWS as an example, you have to know what choices you have to make. And uh, I told you, our world is multi-cloud, right? I have to take from, say, AWS and put it into GCP. So now you see we're choreographing in two clouds and I'm sitting in an enterprise. So you have to orchestrate. How do you see this? So you have to be familiar on the left side on AWS security, on the right side of the Google cloud security, and then connect them. And by design, they are mutually independent. They are not connected. Now, you as expert, or you have to bring in the expert that can connect the dots. If you think, oh, why I will cut corners, I will do it myself, you are exposing to the vulnerability to compromise on the Azure side of it, or even AWS side of it, or the Google Cloud. You understood, right? So that's why the requisite expertise is needed to handle that job. So get the experts. You know that I don't know. So better get an expert who knows that and uh, keep your arc secure, right? Back to you guys. Thank you so much, sir. Anshuman, sir, you want to deliver something on this? So I think your question was, I think you asked why should we do it or what are the benefits of it? I think yes, that should have been indirectly clear from the discussion that we were having over the last one hour. So definitely first thing first that, you know, uh, of course you don't want that exposure to the risk, right? Your data or, you know, your bank account details being stolen. Just think about it, right? You have all your money in your bank account and somebody gets access to the account information, user ID, password, what he or she can do. They can steal all your money and, you know, suddenly, you know, all your life savings is gone. So you can understand that's the biggest risk. Second, of course, you know, a lot of cost is involved here. Money is involved, right? So even if it is not a bank, if it is some other company, if they're paying ransom, and we quoted examples where people have paid ransoms of the range of, you know, 5 million, 10 million, 50 million, right, US dollar. It's like a huge amount, whether they pay in cash or Bitcoin, it's a huge amount of money, so moderate risk is there. And I think for some industries, on top of that, there is also regulatory and compliance risk. So I think we've discussed about finance and uh, pharma or healthcare. These are two industries which have hard regulatory requirements, right? So if the data is hacked or there is a compliance issue, that's a big issue. That can be a legal case against the employee, the department, or even the bank or the healthcare enterprise, right? If the health data of individual is stolen, so that is definitely a big risk. And last is that nowadays we are having also not just industry law, but there are some global uh, protections and law, like data security laws are becoming very you know rampant. So in Europe, we have seen GDPR. In India, some data protection law is coming. In US also, I believe there will be some laws or it is already there. So in that case, like even the user data, if it is stolen, that's an obligation on the company, right? So say for my company, whenever we are collecting any user data, we have to classify it. That is it PII data, means it is personal identifiable information. Is it, you know, what is, what is and what is the sensitivity level? If it is a company information, is it confidential information? Is it public information? Is it something in between, right? So, and if the user data is somehow compromised, it is, it doesn't have to be lost to the company, but that compromise itself can cause a legal case and a lot of hassles, both on the monetary term, in the media, also for PR and the respect and credibility of the company, especially the companies who are providing, you know, customer facing services. So definitely the problems and these things are immense. And only thing is that until that happens to a company, most of the time companies don't realize it. So the good thing is that we are discussing it upfront. And whenever you are joining in a company, you know, take the guardrails and be proactive. Don't wait for the security incidents to happen. Don't wait for your account to be compromised. Don't wait for your money to be stolen from your bank account. Be proactive, try to take major expert advice, training, and try to provide that for your company also, so that you know people 
protect it they lose they don't lose the time money effort and other legal and other ramifications so what do you organize uh thank you so much sir so uh, that again while we are talking about so vulnerable sectors as in healthcare banking but sir what is the benefit if you are going for no so vulnerable sectors as in infrastructure and other sectors how to go about that yeah so i will give you benefit? first text i'll give you first example there so yes sir. so the very first thing is intellectual property everybody knows what ip is so ip is your backbone next 12 quarters or 5 years how are you earning your ip and how strong it is it is deciding so you safely store it in some sort of server somewhere right so now in india i'll give you the cheat sheet how to make it secure they said don't put it on the network put it stand alone in a room lock and key so <laughs> so i gave you a desi large sort of thing how they are doing it it's good by the way don't uh, you know take it for grant when it is super sensitive why hook up into the network right make it stand alone if doable so some of your uh, avionics uh, means uh, airport systems are like that which are more hardware governed but uh, in those days the ecil back in era you would not have heard of the company recent days so they used to manufacture all such equipment for the airports and guard it via the hardware software combination that was age old stuff you see now with the cloud era you have so many new things but you have to know how to put the card rails i'll give you one take away intrusion detection system ids so this has to be there so now even in the healthcare footprint that i have set up we have 13 layers of security i used to just make fun even in prime minister's Uh, layer you have seven layer security when us secret service right so now you are talking of double the that of your prime minister's access what you have now you need double that layers to here in the cyber so that is the level of vulnerability right someone could launch in the military way compromise your missiles and servers and even the bases too so you need to have that control command in structure and 24 by 7 surveillance and monitoring you see it's a necessary investment that you have to do to protect based on the type of the asset i gave you the physical assets to the marking data as uh, dr ghosh brought it to add one layer the data classification is what we do and the security team does that period and they got the enterprise security control standards to enforce one to the enterprise one set of rules second to the cloud several clouds and that's how it will be in security you guys are not familiar but remember the term archer right archer is a information security repository for many enterprises and they use this tool anything go find out from that that is your source of truth there right so that's one free tool i mean within the enterprise that you can go and learn so try to leverage that mask archer or similar type of system to understand the enterprise policies with respect to the security so that makes your life easy and what benefits come they are already stated there so you know obviously why you have to do what you have to do for google versus amazon or gcp it's already pre marked you see they have set you the guard rails only you are unaware where should i go and find out and this is a very common problem that's why in day one if they don't give also you ask are there any of the information security training courses or any website intranet site for me to go and learn these things learn it in the first week itself from there your comfort will be very very high and you will turn in turn educate others also oh i know they are not given me on the day one on onboarding but this is what you got to do right so makes sense so these are the things that we have to do 
and uh, some will be under surveillance you cannot do and one other takeaway is today we have 256 bit encryption for all this encryption decryption we are talking and at a government level some governments can hack this also with enormous supercomputing resources so one level up to this is quantum algorithms so now myself and partnering with MIT Harvard guys so we have now the next generation algorithms also three years from now quantum will be very common oh quantum bit encryption is there but we already done but market is not mature when as it matures we'll push that envelope too and that is uncrackable so means you're doing a 10 power 10 computing that will be a 10 power 15 so you are taking all together, you need a, even a supercomputer to attempt it, right? So then millions of your IoT devices, phones, cell phones, you would have knocked it off at laptops too. So then no compromise or issues with these things. Now you need to worry about the supercomputing platforms with handful of nations, right? So your vulnerability is reduced. Anyway, that's a step into the future not to overwhelm you back to you guys okay yeah thank you so much sir uh, yeah. so sir as the business student we are so we are talking about money and while we are talking about money so there yeah. are two things going on in our mind one is cloud computing can save money while the other thing is yes in the long run cloud computing is costly so what is your view on this yeah, I will take on the question, then defer it to Dr. Ghosh to his perspective. The first, everything comes at a cost. Let me tell you, you are right to the cloud and uh, even Amazon or Azure or GCP. I'll make the fun. So we call it ingress or egress cost. To put the data, it costs. To extract the data, it costs by the bit. Say it costs 10 cents, 0.10 dollars for one gb of data per hour for example so based on your workload how many terabytes or petabytes of data times 10 cents is your hourly bill so it comes definitely at a cost so there is cost of doing business and cost of ownership also so you see nothing is free so these you have to weigh in this cost and then identify okay i can live with this data this data instead of throwing around i can archive this so for example you want to get your history give them this week's history one week's history or best case this month's history don't give lifetime history and last eight years 14 years pull the data then what will happen you are pulling it and you are not even watching it but the meter is on it will cost you by the query now GCP has big query platform like the big data stuff, right? You can query anything and get to a lot of granularity to the click also. But uh, who will pay for the cost? So you have to weigh your option, who will pay for it? And if it is not paying, then your workflow, right? What you got to do every day for your business, be focused on that. And in regulatory finance BFSI segment, the risk auditing is done on a periodic basis. We call it RBC, RBAC, even in healthcare we do. That's role-based access control. Who can see what is totally controlled based on the enterprise security policies, period, no exceptions. So you have to follow those guardrails and now the enterprise is giving you based on your role as analyst, security analyst, information analyst, business analyst, could be different hats. And they have deferred how much you have to see, when you have to see, and to what extent you have to see. So once you follow these guardrails, you will know where I am investing or where I am spending my money unnecessarily, right? So you have to tie it onto the work functions. That's the storyline. That's the only way you can do the cost optimization and avoiding the vulnerability of throwing the data for somebody to take a look at it. Okay. Now I take it back to Dr. Ghosh. Thank you. Uh, yeah, back to you guys. 
uh, thank you so much sir it was wonderful hearing from you anshuman go sir and we would love to hear from you again in our upcoming events uh, so as yes, sir is leaving now uh, yes again, sir, i have another meeting extremely sorry so i have to leave it was really great interacting with all of you and i also got to learn a lot from kamisha sir and all of you so i have visited your campus it's very beautiful few years back but of course now everything is happening online but hopefully you know at some time probably will visit again and meet some of you so i wish all of you all the best for your studies and for your career if some of you want you can feel free to follow me on linkedin i wish you all the best take care bye bye thank you so much sir have a thank great you. day bye bye thank you all right guys uh, i would also say bye unless you have any questions for me i can yes, take sir. one i have few more minutes uh, otherwise we can say bye okay back definitely to you. sir so now i would like to hand over the stage to anchors please we thank dr anshuman ghosh sir and dr kameshwar eranki sir for taking out time from their busy schedules and sharing their valuable insights with us we are now open for questions we request the participants to please put your questions in the chat box if you have any or we can move ahead further yeah for fun i'm mentioning it was 4:30 am call for me the first one in the morning <laughs> so yeah, i'm not talking in my sleep but uh, <laughs> i'm right in front of uh, all the audience here so it was fun early morning too uh, back to you guys we can take on few more questions go ahead guys uh, sir yatin dawar is asking yeah. that we all have heard to clear cookies and cache and okay. such but on the other hand many premium sites like facebook netflix ask access to these cookies so i want uh, he want to ask about the function of these cookies and how can they help the hacker yeah so i'll answer it in two parts one is what you know the other is what you don't know i'll put that so first in what you know always make sense even when something you are not able to access they say go clear the cache clear the cookies makes sense time to time recycle that because through the cookie they are able to identify what is your ip address what is your browser type be it ie ie is gone with windows 11 edge will come through full fledged they sunset it so then firefox and your google right google also is very notorious in that sense chrome uh they capture all the information whatever you are typing in the keyword for the google search also even the typo what you have done it is stored imagine the frustration even you put schizophrenia what is the spelling you have made a typo and that is reflective next two years also to you it's very eye irritating also you see so not only following so obviously yes facebook i am no fan of facebook uh, just to give you although i have a account uh, let them not block with my comments here <laughs> but uh, instagram facebook and facebook business they are all intertied so you see now you may think oh my kid is in instagram you don't have kids so no worries but i'm making it fun so the kid culture demands instagram and the elders is facebook that's us equivalent i have given okay so now but the company owns both of them it's like having left hand and right hand so the left hand does not speak to the right hand at home and ask can you put me into instagram any of the kid they say what the heck your dad is talking right so i'm just giving a common day example so it's my universe but uh, imagine today facebook it's a good case study for you even for what not to do they are given facebook like i told him even for one day let them give a dislike and i'll get 10 billion for you in planet earth you have only 7 billion but i will give you more guys to give the hate signals right so this is what they are exploiting at the vulnerability and how many likes how many things. so don't my two cents is don't be hyper picky just leave it it's another tool just ignore it but uh, india of late had challenges from the facebook side of it and now they are coming to senses with the tightened laws now i'll take the differ difference to the law in europe 
these cookies and settings GDPR that uh, you know our friend Dr. Ghosh was mentioning, it's regulated. All the 27 plus countries, they are part of the GDPR. What they said is, you can't go and freak out and get in the name of cookies. You have to tell them, I accept it or reject it. Now you have the choice in Europe to recognize you in the browser, accept cookies or reject. If you reject, still the transaction can happen, they won't remember you. But in America, for ease of use, they take it. And uh, in Windows 11, rather Microsoft will give you permission to use your laptop or desktop. It is, you understood, right? Literally, they have taken over not only your internet, but even your laptop in terms of security. Even the, what do you say? There are several layers, I'll pause myself here. So don't ever do that to the extent you know, you be the in charge of your gadgets, period, okay? Learn from it, ask the friend, and in a day or two, you will become smart, right? So do that part, okay? So anyway, that is just an example that I am giving for you, okay? Back to you. I gave a bigger answer, but elaborative one. But if anything you want more granularly, I can zero in on that. Okay, back to you. Hitesh, you. A big thank you, sir, for blessing us with your presence amidst your busy schedule. And now I would, I PSV Chinmayi, on behalf of Dot Club and Team Newswire, extend our gratitude to our esteemed guests, Dr. Angshuman Bosh, sir, and Mr. Kameshwar Aranki, sir. Also, I would like to extend my vote of thanks to Dr. Shailjan Sir, Dean Academics, IBS Hyderabad, Professor Madhvi Garikapati, ma'am, Student Activities Coordinator, IBS Hyderabad, Head of HOD Operations and IT, and Area Coordinator, Samyadeep Chakravarti Sir, Faculty Mentor, Team Newswire, Dr. Asha Dhanurad, ma'am, Faculty Mentor, Dot Club, Professor Krishna Dutsena Sir. We would also like to thank our sponsors, Cherry Blossoms, ClicoCard, Click Academy, Culture Legends, D Gamers, Filter Beats, Four Vision, Henry Harvin, QI Media, QI Tech, Story Network, Tripore, Sound Work Manipur, Kriti Hana. So that's it from us. I, Hitesh and Chinmay are signing off for today. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much.